Hi everyone, this is a quick update. I've updated JASP to the most recent version as of October 2021. Um, and so I know for classwork 10, there were some differences between the video demonstration that I posted previously and the version that you're using most likely right now. So this is an updated video to show you how you can still get those same outputs. Um, it is a little bit different. So again, I'm using the file pizza prices. So we have part of the city, toppings, and pizza, price of pizza. We'll just be using toppings and price of pizza in this case. I'm going to go ahead and hide my data by clicking on. You can always hide or expand um, using these in between menus. So maybe I'll just kind of hide my data here. So we're going to start with descriptive statistics. So to get here, you're going to go to descriptives and then that opens up. If you just click right there, that opens up the menu for the descriptive statistics. Okay, so that's how I got that first one. I'm just going to erase that one. Okay, so once you're in the descriptive statistics menu, we're interested for that first model on Classwork 10 in the price of pizza. So we take price of pizza and we move that variable to the right to the box that says variables. You'll see that we get the descriptive statistics printed out. So for price of pizza, we have 50 valid pieces of data, 50 valid cases. We're missing data for zero of them. The mean for those 50 values is 14.119. So what this means is that the average price of pizza, these are 50, 50 pizzas, the price for 50 different pizzas, the average price for all 50 pizzas is $14.12. The standard deviation, so about how much variation on average we see in those prices, you know, if the prices are all really closely tied together or if they're very spread apart with some that are very expensive and some that are very cheap, right? That's what the standard deviation really tells us. We can see in this case, on average, those prices vary by about $4.18. The lowest price, <laughs> the lowest pi priced pizza um, in this data set is $2.27. I have no idea where you can get, I forget what size this is, but um, maybe questionable pizza. <laughs> and then the highest price pizza is $21.64. Okay, So we have all of that in our descriptive statistics. And then what we really want here is we want to get this distribution plot. So to get that plot, we need to expand the drop down menu. There's a little arrow next to where it says plots. If you click anywhere on there, it expands that plot menu. And plots in JASP just means graphs. So under plots, we want to select on the right hand side, under basic plots, you want to select for a distribution plot. That's what it refers to, um, that's what it calls histograms. In JASP, histograms they call distribution plots because really it's just a plot of the distribution of data points. Right? So here we have our histogram. You notice if I unclick, oh, I thought it would disappear. Okay, it does disappear. <laughs> it just takes a little second. And then if I click back in, it will think and then it will add it back in. So you can always play around with all of these options and see what they do. You're not going to break JASP. You're not going to break the data. Um, so feel free to play around as well in here. Okay, so that's the first part. I believe that's for question number six. And then the correlation part, this is really where um, people saw differences in our versions because previously I had said to go to regression and then there used to be an option called correlation matrix and they've taken off that naming. So now where you wanna go is under the classical option, you wanna select correlation. It's not correlation matrix anymore, it's just correlation. So again, regression, and under classical, select for correlation. 
that opens up the correlation menu. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back to the one that I already have set up here. So to recreate the analysis for this um, classwork, we're going to take price of pizza and move it to the right-hand side under variables. And then we're also going to select toppings, since that's the other continuous variable that we're interested in in this case. So we'll be looking at the correlation or the relationship between the number of toppings on a pizza and the price of the pizza. It will automatically be set up with all of these options. Um, as far as sample correlation coefficient, we want to leave that as Pearson's R. On, under additional options, I suggest that you, if it's not already selected, I believe report significance is selected. If it's not, make sure it is. But you, what probably is not selected is flag significant correlations. So what that does is that simply adds asterisks to our value in the table just to highlight, look here, look here, this is a significant relationship. Okay, so that's what it does. If I unclick flag significant correlations and we look back at our table, it just takes off the asterisks that were there to draw our attention to the significance of that particular result. Then to get this graph, you want to look again under plots and select scatter plots. So you'll start without any plots. Once you select, it should add likely just this top part, but then I've also selected statistics. And so to just to demonstrate what that does, it just adds the R value to my plot so I can see the R value listed along with my data. So that's the only difference by selecting this statistics option is now I can see summarized in my graph, oh, I can see that the the correlation is 0.595. So it's a pretty strong positive correlation between the number of toppings on a pizza and the price of the pizza. So that is our second part. So I'll go ahead and close this correlation menu. And then finally, because we can no longer get the version with the line, I, I at least not that I could tell. I played around with all the different options and I could not get the best fit line to graph onto this scatter plot. Um, but you can get it elsewhere. So if you go back to descriptive statistics, again, you just click the first button that says descriptives right at the top left. That will open the descriptive statistics menu Again, we're interested in, in this case, we're interested in price of pizza and toppings. I put them in in that order in the first place. I, I put price of pizza and toppings, and then I looked at my graph, and I saw that it, it was backwards, essentially, right? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the price of the pizza on our dependent variable y-axis based on the number of toppings on our independent variable x-axis. And so here what we have is backwards. We want toppings at the bottom and price of pizza on the left. So remember the dependent variable always goes on the up and down y-axis. The independent variable goes on the horizontal x-axis. So to fix this issue, I simply am going to grab one of these and I'm just going to flip the order that they're in in my variables box and you will see that it updates my graph. So now toppings is on the x-axis, price of pizza is on the y-axis, just as I'd like. And then, uh, let's see, did I click anything yet yeah, to get that line? Yes, I did. Okay, so once you move these variables to the right, you're just going to get this first box with the descriptive statistics for toppings and for price of pizza. To get the scatter plot and to get the regression line, you need to scroll down. Again, you're going to expand the plots menu. And then we need to check a few things. So we want a scatter plot 
And the reason why we're using a scatter plot in this case, rather than say a histogram, is because we are comparing two continuous variables. Histogram is typically more useful if we're just looking at one variable, right? We can see all of the, the distribution of scores. If we are looking at the relationship between two variables, we need a type of graph that lets us put a second variable in. That's our scatter plot. So we select for scatter plot. I believe that it automatically selects some of these options and I've deselected them for simplicity. So I have under graph above scatter plot, I have none. Under graph right of scatter plot, I have none. And then add regression line, I checked and I put it as linear because that is what adds this blue horizontal positively inclined regression line to our graph. If we deselect add regression line, then you see it disappears. If you, oops, if you add it, I believe that the default is smooth and we do not, we are, that is advanced stuff. We are not doing smooth regression in this class. We're only doing linear regression. See, it's even taken a really long time to think about and update it. We don't want that anyway. We want linear regression. We're go only going to be using straight lines in this class. Well, it is thinking about adding that line again. That is the, the last option on there. Uh, so that is how I got the output for Classwork 10. And I also have added it as a Google Doc to the classwork itself. So if you return to the classwork, my internet is very slow right now. Um, then you should see I added it and I highlighted it in green that you can view a copy of the steps used in JASP and the corresponding output in this Google Doc. That is a hyperlink. You can click that and it will open up a Google Doc, or at least it should. Um, that shows you dun, da, 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 screenshots of JASP so that you can see all of the options that are selected in order to get the output that's displayed on the right hand side. And then at the bottom of the file, I have also, I'm just going to make this a little smaller. I've also pasted in a copy of the output. So you can reference this directly um, and make sure that, it, so if you are also following along with JASP, then you can also verify that you're getting the correct numbers. So this is the updated demo for Classwork 10 uh, pizza prices based on number of pizza toppings.